the Saving Helicopters video, where today we'll fly an instrument approach to Cardiff Airport in an EC-135 helicopter. We'll look at what an instrument approach is, different types of approach, instrument flight rules, and whom can fly this sort of approach. Now, first of all, an instrument approach is used for a plane or a helicopter to safely descend below the minimum safe altitude when flying cloud or poor visibility under instrument flight rule conditions, so that an approach can be made to the ground. To fly an approach, the helicopter must be equipped with suitable instruments and navigation equipment that is appropriate for the route that is flown. In addition to helicopter equipment, the pilot too must be appropriately trained and certified, and this is called an instrument rating. We'll cover the details of this qualification in a future video. However, even if the pilot and the helicopter are correctly certified, they may still not be able to fly in bad weather or safely land, for example, if the conditions are so bad that even after completing the instrument approach, the runway environment cannot be seen either because the clouds are so close to the ground or the visibility is so poor, for example, in thick fog. Even en route, some weather conditions are impassable. For example, if there's embedded cumulus nimbus clouds where violent up and down drafts can cause major structural damage and loss of control. Or if the helicopter is not equipped with anti-icing equipment. If there's visible moisture, for example, when flying in a cloud or any mist with a visibility less than one kilometre and the outside air temperature is below the freezing point, then catastrophic icing levels can build up on the engine and the airframe. When you arrive at your destination, there are two categories of instrument approach that exist. Precision and non-precision, depending on the equipment that is installed at the airport and what you have installed on your helicopter. In general terms, though, a precision approach allows you to send closer to the ground than a non-precision approach. Types of precision approach include the instrument landing system, the ILS, or the microwave landing system. These approach systems permit a descent to a decision height of 200 feet above the airfield, although some aircraft are certified to fly right down to the ground. A precision approach provides the pilot with guidance in both the lateral and the vertical sense. Imagine a 3D cone with one end centered at the end of the runway, leading up into the sky. If the pilot accurately flies within that cone, they're safely clear of any obstacles. If the pilot makes it all the way down to the decision height and still cannot see past the runway environment, then a go-around must be flown. A non-precision approach has a higher minimum descent height, and sometimes the guidance is only in the horizontal sense. Common non-precision approaches include the VHF Omnidirectional Beacon, a VOR, which can be coupled with distance measuring equipment, a DME. In many parts of the world, non-directional beacons are still in use and they can also be used for non-precision approaches. Inside a helicopter, an instrument called an aerotomatic direction finder can be used to tune to the frequency of the non-directional beacon and a needle will point directly at the beacon. Now, unfortunately, this technology is rather old-fashioned and it's not as accurate as an ILS and it can only take you down to a minimum of 350 feet above the airfield, although that can be lowered to 300 feet if used with distance measuring equipment. It can also suffer from a number of errors, such as false readings when situated close to a coastline or interference from thunderstorms. The approach that's used in this particular video is a practice approach to Cardiff International Airport using the NDB approach to runway 30. So, what's going on here? Well, the helicopter is following a procedure that's laid out on a published approach plate. The helicopter is flying to the radio beacon, in this case an NDB beacon identified as CDF with a frequency of 388.5 MHz and entered the hold. Once clearance has been obtained, the helicopter flies away from the beacon on a downward leg, slowly descending. Once five miles away from this beacon, usually measured using the DME information, the helicopter can do a left turn back towards the runway and using the beacon to track 297 degrees, corrected for wind drift. Now, whilst it must appear obvious from the video that they're not quite lined up with the runway inside the cockpit, for this training flight, the pilot is wearing a hood that covers parts of their vision so they can only see the instrument panel. In this NDB approach, you're staring at a little needle on the navigation display, which is twitching away, bouncing around, reacting to any angle of bank you have, turbulence, and all the errors that were previously discussed. As the beacon is also offset to the south of the runway, or perhaps I'm just making excuses for flying a lousy approach. On the published procedure, there are key points where a step down in altitude is permitted. The first is where you're cleared outbound from the initial beacon. In this case, we're holding at 4,000 feet and then permitted to descend down to 1,600 feet as we flew out to sea. These altitudes are calculated to keep the helicopter clear of obstacles on the ground in the surrounding area. For example, the high ground to the north of Cardiff and the TV antennas in Cardiff City itself. Once the helicopter is just over four miles from the runway, it's cleared to descent down to the minimum descent altitude of 570 feet. For this approach, if 100 knots ground speed is held, this equates to about 540 feet per minute rate of descent. 
Once you reach 570 feet, if you can't see parts of the runway or the approach lighting, then you have to wait until the missed approach point is reached. In this case, that is once you fly directly over the CDF beacon. Then you have to fly the missed approach procedure, which is a set of specific instructions on what altitude to climb to, what track to fly, and what navigation feature to use, which is all published on the approach plate itself. We will shortly go through some of the key points of an approach plate. For this approach, the correct go around procedure is to climb straight ahead on the runway heading up to 3000 feet and then route back towards the beacon itself. All of this raises the question, why do we not all use instrument approaches? Well, historically, there's been a substantial cost in purchasing the ground-based equipment required for maintaining, calibrating, and obtaining approval for an instrument approach. So typically, they're only found at the larger airports. However, with the advent of accurate, reliable GPS units, smaller airfields can start to create instrument approaches that don't actually have any ground equipment in place. An example of this, at the time of the recording, are approaches to Sywell and Kemble airfields in the UK. Now, the different providers of instrument approach plates. For example, Airbox, as shown in this video, you know, Navblue and Jefferson. Now, let's quickly look at the different points on an approach plate. Firstly, along the top, you have the identifier of a plate, which airfield, runway, and type of approach. And in this case, EGFF, which is the four letter ICAO identifier for Cardiff, and the NDB DME approach to runway 30. Then we have the airfield height, the chart revision, and in this case, it was last updated in August, 2021. Next up are the frequencies that we can expect to use for both communication and for navigation aids. In the main box is a plan view of the approach based around the radio beacon CDF. The hold is shown as a racetrack pattern with an inbound track of 297 degrees and an outbound of 117. Then the route from the beacon going downwind to the approach is shown. In this case, the alternative procedure is being flown and that is indicated by a grey dotted line. Below this is a plan view of approach which shows the key altitudes for the approach, including the minimum descent altitude, 570 feet, and the visibility minimum, 800 meters. The go around instructions are also shown adjacent to this box. We hope this brief overview of the intimate approach procedure has been informative, and we'll look to cover it in further detail in another video. For now, that's it, and take care.